So I'm currently dealing with symptoms of acquired brain injury, which shows up as unannounced and untimely crying, slurring and or delayed speech and fatigue. I have brain inflammation and low oxygen within my body. I also have the following on a day-to-day, -day, sometimes minute-to-minute -minute, uh, pace, long and short fiber neuropathy, chronic inflammation, POTS, dysautonomia, post-exertional malaise, which is exercise equals pain, that's how I describe that, heavy fatigue, dry eyes, tinnitus, costochondritis, delaminating fingernails, growing back lost toenails, my whole right foot and most of my left, dilation of a five millimeter section of my esophagus due to high inflammation, 60% hair loss that is growing back, and after one year, a frozen right shoulder, neck immobility, and more or less, depending on what we're, year we're talking about, over the last four. I cry at times and I get off track sometimes, so I'm going to read to you so I can make, make the best possible impact today. And I'm wearing readers now. <laughs> so I have this bottle of champagne in my refrigerator. I was going to tell you a story about French fries and inflammation, but hear me out. <laughs> it was given to me by a very much loved friend as a present the year I got sick in 2021. I'm not much of a drinker, so it doesn't matter much that I haven't had a flute of champagne over the last four years. It just doesn't. So I recently realized that I may have lost the window of enjoying that bottle of champagne because the shelf life of an unopened, non-vintage bottle of champagne is typically three or four years. I have been sick for four years. I've been so sick that I haven't even thought of having a glass of champagne. I can't drink alcohol due to the medication I'm on anyway. The reason why I bring up this story of champagne is that I've been carrying this bottle of champagne around for four years. I've been sick and because of the person that, um, I've been sick and I keep it because of the person that gave it to me. It represents a strikingly long period of time now. It has happened, it, a lot has happened in four years. A lot has been missed. It has traveled from my previous residence in Flagstaff to my new life in Phoenix, all the way through getting worse in my illness, through not getting better. When I moved to Phoenix two years ago to gain access to new health care, I put it in a cooler full of ice so I wouldn't break the refrigeration. Here it is, sitting in the back of my refrigerator, offering the opportunity for me to open it up and finally have a glass of champagne. Drink it for Valentine's Day, it says to me, because I anthropomorphize it now. Why don't you just open it and celebrate feeling better? It continues to wait patiently to bring in the new year, maybe? How about your next birthday? 53? Okay, we're at 54, how you doing? Okay, ready to celebrate 55? A 55 now. I will pop the cork on this bottle of champagne one day to symbolize change and because I'm curious to see if it's still bubbly inside. And I imagine I won't drink it because it has expired. <laughs> I'll celebrate the milestone that I've yet to experience, which is getting better. I'll celebrate my very much loved friend when I open it. He committed suicide two years ago. Little did he know that I was going to take it back over to his house and open it with him once I got better. Sadly, I missed that opportunity. I think of him every time I look into my refrigerator. I dedicate to Dave Scott. I dedicate to getting better, to making some sort of impact, to being heard and hopefully opening your eyes to the debilitating, upending, and painful nature of coronavirus-19 disease. Trigger warning. Long COVID, AKA coronavirus-19 disease, and all the other names it goes by, it's like a cancer to me. I read that the onset fatigue is the same level as stage four cancer patients endure. It is that heavy. It can be fixed. It's a never-ending story of unrelenting pain, and it is that anxiety-producing. My illness story, quickly. So, I was very sick, very. I got sick January 29th, 2021. I was two days away from my first COVID vaccination appointment. I was actively sick for 24 days at home. For the past few years, people would ask me if I was hospitalized during this time. I wasn't. Come to find out that that wasn't necessarily a precursor to long COVID, like originally thought. I went to the ER twice. I was sent home to get through the illness, get better or die each time. There was no help. Hospitals were full and I didn't have pneumonia. It hit my nervous system hard, heavy and fast. The first ER trip was on day two because I thought I was choking. My throat was closing up. 
I tested positive at the hospital during the Delta wave, and the illness ramped up day after day, and two weeks in, I was back in the ER because I thought I was having heart attack. I was sent home again, and a week later, I was convinced I was dying. My throat and tongue was raw with rash, and my body painfully pink and mottled all over. The nerve pain progressed day after day, and all I could do was sit in hot baths for hours to try to get it to mimic the pain so I could handle it. When I was out of the baths, I would put ice packs on my chest. I did nothing but writhe in pain, barely sleep, and I was in complete fear of the night each night because that's when it got worse. Every night was worse than the last. There were points where I literally begged my older teenage son at the time to sleep next to me in bed and not leave me. He was my caretaker at home during my illness. Outside of many other details that I'm skipping due to time constraints here today, I ended up writing the first goodbye letter of my life that I never delivered during that time, convinced I'd end up at the hospital within the week and not come home again. I would wake up and I wasn't sure I could handle any more pain, any more exhaustion, any more terror every day. There were no medications to help. I was told to take Benadryl for immense cytokine storm that I was experiencing. I slept on lozenges 24 hours a day. I slept with them in my mouth because of the pain in the back of my mouth and throat. But on day 24, I woke up to what I can only describe as complete release of nerve pain, internal vibrations and flushing. The waves of pain released. It ramped up for 23 days and subsided on day 24. But this was only the beginning, by the way. It has been four years since the viral remnants persist and whatever damage I'm dealing with. I'm worried about my neuro issues that persist. I was bedridden for three months after the acute phase, only to find out that I believe the acute phase actually continued for 36 months for me. At six months, I was forced by my life station to go back to work part-time, completely sick as a dog. I would have to take brain breaks at work, cover my eyes, get away from people, almost fall asleep. I ended up moving to Phoenix and I positioned myself 10 minutes from Banner Health on purpose. I was on the verge of a constant emergency state for three years, and the minute I would experience an improvement, something else worse or different would occur. I've experienced the majority of the 200 recognized long COVID symptoms. So we need help, quickly, from Oxford's Nullfield Department of Primary Care Health Services. Quote, long COVID is a dismal condition that there are grounds for cautious optimism. Various mechanism-based treatments are being tested in research trials. If proven effective, these would allow us to target particular subgroups of people with precision therapies. Regarding work, I lost my job that I held in April. I worked for four months, and prior to that, I had a series of positions that I asked for accommodations at, and I was declined each time. I haven't been able to work well, and I want to really badly. I need to even more than that. I'm really sick, I manage, and I flare. Did you know that the state of Arizona has 18.1% long COVID patients? It's a proportionally higher um, percentage than other states in the country. So I want to give you that fact. In review, my worst moments during this illness were the 24 days I was sick and, and years number two to three. Things got progressively better in many respects at 12 months. Then another milestone for me hit at 18 months thanks to acupuncture treatments three times a week for six plus months. I was very sick from the two to three year mark. I was starving. I had a myriad of problems with my stomach, esophagus, eating, swallow, speaking, my tongue, my vagus nerve, my rib cage. I lost 20 pounds. I'm back to my normal weight today. I was very small for me and I lost most of my hair and it just continues on. You may be wondering at this point, quickly, I don't mind sharing that I have no pre-existing conditions. I had every test in the book to be able to say that with confidence. I entered this illness healthy and I was dedicated to health and wellness my whole active adult athletic life. I knew this woman once that used to race mountain bikes in 25 mile races. She'd run 10Ks for fun at elevation, play soccer or basketball with her son practically every single day of his upbringing all the way through high school years. I never met someone so dedicated to health, calm spirit, and athletics. I think that woman was me. And back to that bottle of champagne, I raise a glass to your health and to that of your loved ones. Whether it be a mocktail or a glass of champagne, please celebrate each other. I'd like to thank the following quickly for my continued success navigating through this illness. Knox at Stuff Community Acupuncture and Flagstaff, Dr. Teresa Dow, my chronic fatigue specialist in Flagstaff, 
Dr. Naomi Newman and Dr. Nguyen from Banner Health Internal Medicine in Phoenix, Dr. Shu and his efforts with the NIH Recover Study, and the NIH Recover Study staff here in Phoenix, the University of Arizona NIH Community Engagement Alliance Peer Support Hotline Project. Please reactivate that. I was a volunteer. The physical therapists and flag staff in Phoenix that I have gone to over the past three years. Um, Dr. Sue Charlittiwan, my gastroenterologist in Phoenix, cardiologist, neurologist, occupational and speech therapist. And thank you to Patty Contreras, House of Representative Representative. She's looking into getting speech therapy uh, as a modality for people with long COVID um, in the Medicaid access healthcare system. I talked to her last week. And lastly but not least, the Arizona Department of Economic Security Vocational Rehabilitation Program. I've just been awarded the opportunity to rehabilitate over the next year, and I feel very supported. Thank you for your listening. Here's to you, and here's to your health. Please listen to your patients, open your hearing to your patients, and learn from your patients.